Well, what's great about these, these are actually built to be a standalone feature. It wasn't made to have water spilling out of it. I know. We kind of, <laughs> we kind of do that because we go a little bit you know, outside the box when we're doing things. So we're the first ones in here and there's seven other people coming, all extremely talented. How are they gonna top it? Or how are they gonna do something that I haven't already done? I mean, I took all the ideas. We went under the deck, we got a bridge, we've got this thing in the water, we've got walls, we've got a fountainscape, big boulder waterfall. I mean, good luck, guys. Good luck. <laughs> I didn't want to tell Jack this, but but if there was a trophy for Artist of the Year for the Sandbox Studio, Chris and I have decided that he's been disqualified. <laughs> getting close. I mean, we're past the pergola. We've got the post down in there. Waterfalls are framed out. We've got all of this kind of buttoned up in here. The urns are all set. And Chris and Jack are kind of doing the plumbing over here. But I thought it'd be a good time to come over here, show you guys the plumbing because as simple as this may look, one, two, a couple urns, a bowl or two. Wait till you see how complex the plumbing actually gets just to operate that stuff. Hey! We have a lot of plumbing here and that's all for our fountainscape. You want to be able to control every single pipe that's feeding all these different features so we get a nice even flow. We get some real fine tuning when it comes to these waterfalls that are coming out of the bowl and out of the urn section. That's what's going on here with this manifold. We're feeding in from our pump, which is all the way over there in the vault, and then we're just dispersing it to different areas. So we've got all these ball valves where we can just dust every single line in this manifold. Three of us were talking a little earlier about the cost of feature like that, just the fountain feature. Yes. And when you price out just like, you've got two, three walls, mm -hmm. uh, an urn, a bowl, it doesn't seem like it would be that big of a deal. But when well, you start looking at the complexity of the plumbing. The plumbing's definitely right? <laughs> Yeah, and, that, and that's what, we've had a lot of questions in our videos, and I've seen on your videos, when yeah. you're doing your fountainscape videos, you get a lot of questions on how the hell do you do the plumbing. And yes, we're gonna be tearing this down in a couple yeah. days. Otherwise, we probably would have done things a little bit differently, but the complexity the ball valve still would have had to been the same. What always ends up happening with these fountainscapes is you're working in a tight area. Like we're trying to jam it into a courtyard or something. So now we're trying to put all this manifold madness into a small space. And inevitably you're doing it like closest to where the urns are. Mm -hmm. So you've got to get in there and adjust it while the thing's raining down on you. <laughs> I would love to have lots of space to put the plumbing off to the side, a nice manifold box. But this is just that's quick. Do they make manifold boxes that big? Well, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> Well, no. no, no. <laughs> so explain really quick. So this is our three inch line coming from a five to nine. So we've got our adjustable flow five to nine coming this way. And then each one, <laughs> each one of these guys feeds the walls. Yeah, so this whole bank right here is just for the stack slate wall. You come over here, we've got a little bit of redundancy going on. <laughs> we thought we were gonna do something else to begin with, but it kind of changed plans a little bit. Now this is going to our large stack slate urn. This one is going to our bowl, our, our, our bottom section of urn that's on top. And then this one is going to our patio bowl over here. So all in all, we're feeding seven different features from this one manifold. Yeah, it's amazing. And so it really, when you start thinking of, I don't know, I would put this at a twenty to $30,000, you know. Yeah, I think something like this with all the rock work, and it's more than just buying pieces. Yeah. It's understanding how to take those pieces and make it look like it's something you want. Actually, why don't we get you guys over there really quick talking about that because the cuts alone took half a day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. It's, it's understanding fundamentally how to put this together so it is appealing. And then bringing all these things into the, the equation, like this, this is a lower section of one of these large urns. This had to be cut out to fit and then just all the mechanics to make this thing actually stay here. This is a temporary deal, but if we're doing it for real, like there's a lot of support that goes into all this stuff. Start putting water in these things, they get extremely heavy. Each section of wall is about 800 pounds of gravel just yeah. to fill up a single section of wall. Well, and we it. fill them all the way to the, you know, get them all the way to the top because they're hollow and light yeah. and we need them to last forever. Yeah, and then within that, you have to do all your hard plumbing, so there's a lot of cutting that goes on. There is a lot of fabricating happening here outside of even just the cost of the features. Themselves. Well, we were sitting here late the other night and it was just moving this top urn back and forth two inches, yeah. back and forth, back and forth, because we really want that to fall 
down into here. If we didn't cut it into the wall, that would have never happened. Anybody can come in here and just take the full pieces and then put other full pieces around them. Yeah. But when you start cutting them in so they all kind of intersect with each other, it starts getting complicated. What's gonna be really cool about this particular fountainscape is all the different types of falling water. You've got the cascading down the front, it'll be rippling off of all this texture. And you've got the same kind of thing happen. This is a bit more violent because there's a lot of water coming out of this one. But then you've got these clean ribbons of water spilling in and that volume right there is feeding these two smaller openings. So you can have those clean ribbons of water all inside here with all this action happening around it. So you have white water and then clean water and then we're mimicking that on the other side of the bowl. So if somebody wanted these things, we kind of talked about cost, but also the space. Like look at how like from that end to the other side of the bowl is over 20 feet. So keep in mind too, Brian, we're doing this in a pond system. We've already got a pumping system. We've got a body of water. If this was a standalone feature, there'd be a large reservoir, a pondless vault, and all kinds of stuff going on for the infrastructure to actually run it. So you need quite a bit of space for something like this. This is a larger fountainscape, I would say. Oh yeah, 30 grand. You know, 20 to 30 grand somewhere in there, depending on, and you got lights. I mean, there's lights on everything. You've got lights cored into the top, lights inside there, hitting each ribbon falls, lights hitting the walls. There is actually a light that was drilled in and countersunk inside here. So when this is running, you're gonna have a column of water this high. This light is positioned so it's gonna highlight that column oh, of water. Great. At night, it's going to get on fire. It's gonna look amazing. There's all these things that you start to notice when you have a yeah. uh, fountain like this. Yeah. Like you said, like having the, the effect of the light dancing off the trees, off the canopy. It's, it's really cool. I actually have a fountainscape in my backyard. I used to have a pond back there, yeah. and now I have a fountainscape. I like to look out the window, and I, I appreciate all the work that went into it. So for me, I really like it. Now look at how far that bowl cantilevers out over the wall. Yeah. It's kind of defying gravity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and would have never worked if we didn't counterbalance it with an enormous amount of stone on the back yeah, side the of back there. Half of the, bowl. the other yeah. thing I think I really love that you and the guys did was the way it's planted. So many people just leave this yeah. as a big reservoir of water, but when you put in that bib liner in there, then just put gravel over the top, now this becomes a giant aquatic planter. Yeah, Drew did an awesome job with planting this up. It looks amazing. It looks like little garden within the patio bowl. What's great about these, these are actually built to be a standalone feature. It wasn't made to have water spilling out of it. I know. We cut. <laughs> <laughs> From here, I can't see the ball. I'm coming around, of course, and you're like craning your neck around. You see the waterfall in the backdrop and that clean ribbon of water that's going to be coming into that deep stream. And the fish here, it's a whole other world. Yeah. And that's what we talk about, like creating that mystery in the yard. And I know Brian talks about this all the time. Having it where you can't see every portion of the water feature, if you can afford to do that. This is going to be an expensive water feature, but if you want to fill the whole backyard space and make an over-the-top landscape, doing it with that mystery where things are kind of blocked off and then you round the corner and like, wow, that looks, I'm standing right here and I can already picture that waterfall back there and having that bowl on it. run us through like kind of what's left we've got the waterfalls up in there basically the waterfalls are 80 percent finished we just got to button up some edges get our spillway in and then i think we're just about ready for plants this is just that, that it's that element that we both do quite a bit in, in our designs is, is we are starting to use wall stone or some kind of vertical element inside the pond just goes straight down you just picture people sitting their butts on the edge of this patio letting their feet dangle in letting the fish swim right up to the edge you see little kids on their bellies feeding the fish you know, it's just, it's such a neat thing where you don't have to stack stone or have enormous stone to go straight down in a pond. It's just a very, very clean look. And it gives, you're allowed to make that kind of serpentine shape and really keep that contour of the, that winding stream that we're always trying to go for. It's, so we're incorporating a more of a formal element into this, but the way it ties in with the boulders framing each end and having the planting coming in, kind of blurring the line of where the formal ends and yeah. where the more natural starts, I think it fits really well. I, I like the way it works. It's so clean, like you're standing up here, it's such a sharp edge, but then you look inside and you just appreciate everything beyond it. So it, it's a great observation area. And then looking from here out, there's no obstruction, just right to the water. And the fish are swimming all up here, so it'll be a great picture. It's just such an effortless way. Like we always bring the pond up as close to the main viewing area as we possibly can, whether it's a deck or a patio. And lately, I mean, the three of us did it out in San Diego. The yeah. three of us did it out at Shaquille O'Neal's place. And of course, we're gonna do it here in the studio. And it's just an 
effortless way to bring the patio up to the pond, keep that really clean look. And then when you use the wall stone, it doesn't use up a whole lot of real estate in the pond. Look at how much real estate we're using for rocks in here. And this keeps us nice and clean, which then allows fish to circle around this pole. I was so worried when we got back here that we were gonna lose space, because I, I really wanted the fish to make it all the way up here. Yes. And then I knew we were running out of, I mean, we took a little more space than we were supposed to anyway. <laughs> but I'm like, this is the perfect way to do that. And just what you said, Brian, we were able to keep it tight yep. and still give us room around this post. I mean, how great does that post look now? Down in the water where you're the fish are gonna be swimming all around this thing. I'm so psyched to get water in this. It's gonna change, it looks great now. When there's water in here, it's gonna be over the top. We are totally wild. We are so close. <laughs> I love these little, de like these little detail things. Like this is something thought out, you know? We're sitting in here, you've got the bucket up there jacking this up, we're sliding the liner underneath it all. You know, the way this column comes down etched into that boulder yep. right over there. That's always that, that last 10% that I think all of the artists of the year think about, we think about, you think about. And well, what's uh, gonna be interesting to see is, so we're the first ones in here and there's seven other people coming, all extremely talented. How are they gonna top it? Or how are they gonna do something that I haven't already done. I mean, I took all the ideas. We went under the deck, we got a bridge, we've got this thing in the water, we've got walls, we've got a fountainscape, a big boulder waterfall. I mean, good luck, guys. Good luck. <laughs> I didn't want to tell Jack this, but but if there was a trophy for Artist of the Year for the Sandbox Studio, Chris and I have decided that he's been disqualified <laughs> because he's gone about 25 feet past the studio. Let me show you what I'm yeah, talking about awesome. here. <laughs> so this was our final wall. I don't know if you can see the machines. <laughs> like Waterfalls are past everything. Actually, right where the waterfall sits, you might still be in bounds. We just can't put any plants. <laughs> yeah. This is your problem. <laughs> awesome, let's get this waterfall all buttoned up, then we'll come back in here and kind of talk about just the style of waterfalls and how we like to just try to keep it as simple as possible, which makes it look actually that much more dramatic. All right. Okay, this is the exciting moment. We get to move the fish from, there's Andrew right over there. Move the fish and put them in. So just like you would in a regular pond. We don't, we have some big fish. We're not gonna put too many fish in there, but they're only gonna be in there for one day. You ready, Andrew? So Andrew, our retail store manager, I told you to get everything ready. Did you do it? Yep. All right, thank you. This is so fun. This is our Japanese koi pond area. And we also have some big butterfly koi. And I think the, yeah, there he's got it. I think some big butterfly koi would be perfect for this. And we got the uh, koi sock net, right, bud? Yep. All right, so you got your bathing suit, right? So while he's doing that, I'm gonna do a temp gun. We have the water at 66.2. I think it's 62 back there, so that's that's fine, right, Andrew? No problem. A couple degrees. A couple degrees. It's a little cooler because it's next to the warehouse doors. Well, I would say that's about as least stressful as we can make it for him. Yeah. We're taking you to a cooler home just for a day. Making it as stress-free as possible and a little bit stressful of a situation. So the koi net is the least stressful one because it holds a little bit of their weight. It's real soft material. We don't want to pick them up in this one, which is more for just wrangling them.
the fish are in. And if you want to see the rest of this amazing water feature, check out Greg Whitstock, the pond guy on YouTube. Awesome underwater footage with my Axis Go camera. Spectacular work from Atlantis Water Garden. So check out Greg Whitstock, the pond guy on YouTube, and you're going to see the final reveal of this amazing project. I love my cat. Dude, four days crushed it. Four, four days crushed it. It is, this looks incredible. I don't know what else could have been done here to make it any better. And that's what I'm so looking forward to with the next seven artists that are coming to build in this studio is to see what they come up with. Because I don't know. Like I'm, I'm so I'm so enamored with the way this turned out. I don't know what else they're going to do that's going to beat this. I truly am speechless. I'm speechless at, at the whole, not just the finished product, but the whole experience. The amount of effort that went into this was absolutely insane. Which unfortunately, <laughs> you guys are going to have to tune in to Atlantis Water Gardens channel, as well as Greg Woodstock the Pond Guys channel to see that. Subscribe, hit that like button, let him know what you think, because if you don't, he'll find you and he'll tell you about it. <laughs> Jack has set the bar extremely high. The rest of the artists here are going to continue that same amount of creativity. Yeah, absolutely. And they're going to deliver as much as he did, and I couldn't be more happy, man. I'm so proud. We're exhausted. Yeah. I think it's time for a cold beer, maybe a nap. Well, you only have about T minus 36 hours <laughs> before Alan Decker and his wonderful wife Jody come in from Decker's Pondscapes from uh, New York, and they're each gonna come in here. That guy's kind of a big deal, too. Step it up, Decker. Make it happen. <laughs> Until next time, thanks again. We'll check out you guys later.